We're now going to look at the bias point of a transistor. And what the bias point is, is the DC voltage and uh, current around which a small signal voltage and current are going to swing. And we'll look at that in a moment. So if we have base current, collector current flowing into a transistor, both of those currents end up in the emitter. And so we can write, whether it's an NPN or a PNP transistor, that the emitter current is equal to the sum of the base current plus the collector current with a simple KCL expression at the emitter. Now in a transistor we can plot a set of characteristic curves for any transistor that should look something like this. where each of these curves represents a different VBE. So we see that we have an increasing collector current up to a point when we increase VCE while using different VBEs. Now note, for a PNP transistor, we just need to reverse the subscript. All right, we can look at this plot and see clearly a couple of our regions of operation. So looking at the plot here, we can see that below a certain VCE, and we'll call this VCE the saturation voltage, or VCE sat, the transistor is going to be in the saturation region. Above this VCE sat or VCE saturation, the transistor is in the forward active region. And finally, if the transistor is not on and no currents flowing, it is in cutoff. Okay. So normally what we do is we pick a DC operation point that we want the transistor to operate at. I'm going to label such a point right here. And this corresponds to a certain level of VBE, a certain level of VCE, we'll call this VCEQ, and a certain DC collector current, we'll call this ICQ. Okay, so when we start to analyze transistor circuits, what we want to do is find the bias point first because we're going to use this to find our small signal parameters. So the first thing that we do with a bipolar transistor is we assume that it's in the forward active region. This is where we want to use the device. So we assume forward active region. Uh, the first thing that we need to do with our assumption is to check if current flows. And the next thing we need to do once we've calculated whether current is flowing and calculated what that current is, is to find VCE. So we're going to check if VCE is greater than VCE sat. And if it is, then we know it's in saturation. Now a typical value for VCE sat is about 200 millivolts or 0 0.2 volts. So if both of these conditions are true, if current is flowing and if VCE is greater than VCE sat, then we know that the device is in the forward active region. And next, what we need to do is find a small signal model. 